Do you have employees in Florida? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. So we'll talk about that too. We'll we'll start off a little bit there too. Okay. So we're actually live on YouTube right now. Oh, so excuse, excuse me. Let me turn that sound down. And now it takes me another minute where I've. Uh, 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 hey, hey! If you're all just uh, tuning in, uh, I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. We're doing our daily tech scout. If you uh, if you give us a little patience here, uh, we'll we'll get all set up and we'll start at the top of the hour. Uh, just take me a moment. We're almost there, Robert. Thank you for your patience. Sorry. And it's a little bit geeky how we get all this to work, um, but it, it works. So we're almost there. I think I did that right. Let's see. Let's take this link. Okay, I'm gonna give it a shot. We'll, we'll see if we go live when I hit the button. If not, I'll have to fix that. And Nope, not quite there yet. Sorry, Robert. No worries, take your time. Okay, sometimes when you try to rush, you go, it takes longer than it should. Uh, could go back to my YouTube. Let me grab that back here. Let's see. We're almost, almost there. Try that again. Fresh. Okay, great. So uh, we're we're now uh, uh, live. Uh, give me a moment, Robert. I get all set up. We'll do a little countdown, and then we'll 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 get started. Almost there. And I need my Zoom window. Thanks all for your patience. We're just about to get started. We're just completing our little tech scout to get set up today. Almost there. Okay. Okay. So uh, in five, four, Hi, I'm Dan Smigbrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Friday, September 8th, 2017, and you're watching WGAN Live at 5. Uh, today's guest is uh, um, Ariel Look, CEO, uh, Robert uh, Conan Camp. Robert, good to see you. Good to see you guys. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, you bet. So uh, I think you're in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina today. Yes. But you have team members that are, are actually in harm's way uh, as we speak with Hurricane Irma. Can you give us just an update on, on your team? Unfortunately, yes. I do have team members down in South Florida, or we do. And, um, we, you know, it's, it's scary because the storm is quite big, bigger than a lot of the storms that have come through South Florida. So we'll just pray that everybody stays safe and um, hopefully there's something left over when the storm leaves. Yeah, our, our 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 thoughts are with all your uh, all your teammates uh, in, in Florida dealing with the uh, Hurricane uh, Irma, as are um, uh, many members of our our community as well. Yes. Um, so, um, Robert, um, very successful Matterport service provider. 
uh, uh, tell us about Aerial Look. So Aerial Look was founded uh, four years ago in February. And we started out to change the way we experience real estate. And we started out with drones. Um, when getting into drones, um, it, we saw that it took off. And so we, we actually started Aerial Look to build drones. And um, we pivoted to changing the way we experience real estate because it became expensive to build the drones. And um, in order to generate revenue, we put, you know, we had these drones that we were building with cameras on them. So um, I had the idea of my past experience being in real estate. I said, hey, might as well, you know, try to capture real estate with these drones and sell the videos and generate some revenue so we can continue building our platforms. <laughs> and so I, as I knew that it would take off, it did take off. And it kind of uh, got overwhelming because um, and we weren't even using gimbals. It was just a, um, a drone with a camera, a GoPro hooked up to it. So, um, you know, it was very shaky, but it was so new that everybody just loved seeing it. And no one knew what the quality should be because you really couldn't get quality out of a drone at that time. And so as we started to see it pick up more, I said, okay, I think it's time to pivot. Um, I believe that this could be a huge market, real estate. Um, you know, if we were able to tap the, uh, the national and global market, it would be ex exponentially beneficial for all parties involved. And so um, we started to focus on real estate and we knew that we, Hey, we've got the exterior, we've got the drones. Now what are we going to do in the interior? And um, I was actually uh, at my wedding. Um, I got married with my wife in Bora Bora and we were hanging out on a tour uh, boat and we ran into a couple and actually, I don't know if you're familiar with LNG studios, um, but they, they're a Matterport service provider out of Vancouver. Yes. And so Leon and I became friends as the CEO and um, came back to the States. We stayed in contact here and there, talked about different things we were doing, but we never talked about Matterport. And one day I was reading a Huffington Post article and I saw Matterport, I saw him. And so I called him up and I said, hey, Leon, I, I got to get on this. I, I was looking for something for the interior. <laughs> and so he goes, well, I'll tell you what, I've got two cameras. Um, you know, we were in beta with Matterport, so they're not really available to the general public. I said, well, I'd love to buy one. So he sold me a camera. And I started traveling the country and scanning for free anything that I could come across from mansions, homes to hotels. Um, I'd go rent rooms at the Ritz Carlton and the suite there and spend the money just so I could scan it. And I'd run down in the morning with the scan and show the, uh, the, the, the managers. Everybody would be all in all about it, but it would never lead to anything. Um, I did that for three years. I, I literally just closed deals with Ritz Carlton and, and Marriott Luxury so that we can continue to do this. Thank you. Um, on uh, more of their, um, you know, hotels. And right now we're working strictly with Marriott Luxury, which is St. Regis, uh, uh, Ritz Carlton, The Addition, JW, and um, one, one more I can't think of. But anyways, um, working with them now, that'll uh, hopefully help us grow more than we're, you know, where we're at now. And it'll also help us utilize the We Get Around network to source Matterport service providers. So I think it's a great platform that you've built and hats off to you and kudos and a round of applause because what you've done is amazing and it's, you've built a community and an ecosystem and I, and I love it. And I think that a lot of people are thankful for it. And if it wasn't for that ecosystem, I don't think a lot of people would be as successful as they've been. So I want to share that with you before I go further, but. Um, uh, thank you. I, I, I think we're, we're all very lucky that we've actually found our, found each other yeah. uh, to have this common interest that, that we share a, a, across the country, across continents across languages uh, and have this common commonality uh, of a, a passion that we all share uh, and, and really want to just help each other uh, succeed faster in what we're doing. Yes. Um, so th this is actually fascinating to, to hear about how you got involved in uh, Matterport. You had to go get married and time out your <laughs> honeymoon to be in Bora Bora at, 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 this, at this, the same exact moment and then to As automatically Leon. read the H Huffington Post yep. uh, it, to to have uh, to see Leon there. So it was like, oh, my gosh. You yeah. Know, and that's serendipitous. You. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, it was a blessing. Um, everything happens for a reason. So. And, and, I, and I think I heard you pivot a couple times in that process. Uh, yeah. You know, it wasn't like you set out to say, oh, Matterport, I'm going to go establish a business. Uh, it was like, oh, I love this aerial thing. I'm going to, thus the name aerial look at, that you, you started out. And, uh, and, and, and over time, uh, uh, and I, I think it's fascinating to hear about, you know, re renting, renting rooms and go shooting the, the spaces. <laughs> We've got many stories that I could uh, tell you that inquire me getting on planes and flying to California or wherever to scan and spending thousands of dollars of my own money, sometimes almost $10,000 to do something because I believe in it. Right. And one thing I want to say 
following the, the, the MSP network or the We Get Around network, um, I see a lot of camera operators and, and you guys get, um, it gets, you guys get anxious and worried when you see other people trying to do it cheaper or Matterport's trying to do something or somebody else is bringing something to the market. Don't worry about Matterport. Don't worry about the camera or who's got the best camera. Worry about what you're doing and what you're offering and the product and service that you're creating and hone in on that and continue to innovate it. And if Matterport's the best, the best uh, tool for the job, then great, but there'll be other tools that'll be better in the future. And your business shouldn't ride on, oh, well, if it, on Matterport, it should ride on you and what you do and what you hustle. And so for instance, since a new camera comes out, my, my clients like Ritz Carlton aren't like, oh, well, what about Matterport? They're just say, hey, Robert, we know that you're going to keep us at the forefront of technology. And so we're going to do business with you because of that. And, and, a, and a lot of different reasons that we bring to the table. But mainly, you have to build yourself as I'm going to take you guys to the next level, no matter where it is. We're either creating it or partnering with it. And you're going to be a part of it if you do business with me or yourself. Yeah, I, I would I would certainly second that uh, that advice to people. I I know you know early on we started writing about. I mean, at, at the time Matterport when we started the forum back in August of 2014, uh, uh, really Matterport was the I think the only camera of its mm -hmm. kind. That you know, t t fast forward today, there's more than 70 cameras in this space. And uh, you know, I would get some phone calls and emails from Matterport saying, "Hey, you know, don't you want to just keep writing about us?" And I said, "I said, no, no. Well, everyone in our in our community is is like, uh, you know, leading edge and and want to know about you know what what is the latest and greatest, uh, and they want to know how Matterport compares to that. So, uh, no, we're going to keep covering all this stuff because because." Our, our audience is interested in, in knowing about that. And, and, and frankly, you know, uh, you know, a little competition is probably not a bad thing in, in order to help uh, light a fire under Matterport yeah. to innovate at a faster Lower pace. prices yeah. and, and work with their MSPs yeah. rather than work against them. Yeah, be sensitive to what, what the, uh, the We Get Around Network Forum community is saying. So um, uh, we would certainly uh, second exactly what, what, what you've said is it's about it's about you. It's not about the technology. So what is it about you or aerial look that actually uh, sets you apart, differentiates you when you go in to talk to um, um, uh, the, the kinds of clients that you're describing that are obviously large deals? So it's about building value. And it's extremely important to build value. And I promise you, and I, you could read it in books and you can pay for these books, but it, it's common sense. And if you build value, the money will come. The opportunity will come. And, and so what I started out to do is I started out knowing that, hey, right now there's not many people out there that are doing what we're doing, but there soon will be. And actually, it's better for us that, that there's more people out there. The more people, the more adoption, the more opportunity. The less people, then the less of all the factors we just mentioned. So um, it was very important to, um, you know, focus on kind of the value add in addition to just creating a 3D tour. In addition to creating a drone video or drone photos, how else could I help them? A lot of these people, they just buy something. They don't know what to do with it, right? And so one of the services that we offer, and it doesn't cost any money. It's, it's for the affordable cost of our tours. I'm, here, I'm in this for the long run, so I'm not counting every penny. And I am in a better situation than most MSPs because I have other companies. Um, I have other revenue streams. I don't have to necessarily make money selling these tours in the beginning because of that. And that is something that benefits me and but i don't want it to be a crutch for someone else to say oh well you were successful because you had other revenue streams and you didn't have to rely on this as your main source of income because that's not the truth i moved out at 15 years old and i and i started many companies from nothing no one ever believed in me except for me and god and my hustle and, and i bring them to where they're at today and so I, I really think that everybody who's in this game right now is has a exponential opportunity to create wealth, to create longevity, to create a business that's forever, as long as you continue to innovate and so, and add value. And so in addition to helping them do something with those tours, you know, we're coming up with different ways to tell them, Hey, you know what? Maybe, um, Matterport's not what you need right now. Maybe it's just a drone video, or maybe it's a 360 photo from your phone. Yes. It's, I'm not going to make any money telling you to go get a 360 photo from your phone, but if I can get you into the 360 mindset, you'll then get understand how valuable it can be and you'll move along and start to invest in your in your brand and your future. And so it's about adding value around there too because a lot of times a service provider sits down in front of somebody and tries to sell them something and if they can't make the sale that's the end of it. Well it doesn't need to be. And it shouldn't be I'm sitting down to make a sale. It should be I'm sitting down to get a better understanding of your needs so that I can create a solution, right? 
and working with them as a business partner, not so much a service provider. So when I walk into, when I sit down with the executive teams at these large brokerages, Sotheby's International, Terra Holdings, um, I sit down with these people and I let them know I'm not a service provider. I'm here to be your business partner. My success is your success and vice versa. And so I want them to know that not only am I, they can provide, rely on us for the service, but that they can rely on us to grow their business. And that's what sets us apart from every other company out there. And by continuing to help these big organizations grow their bottom line, it only brings validation to what we're doing and we can spread that. But I'm not going to hide that from anybody because I want everybody to do the same thing because there's more than enough real estate out there. There's more than enough restaurants. There's more than enough venues. I mean, we could sit here and talk all day what can be scanned and monetized. There's more than enough of that around to where there'll never be enough cameras or operators on the ground to cover it all. So I want people to take note to the successes and, and to the factors that have gotten there because you can implement them and get there too. It's one plus one equals two and nothing else. And that's what a lot of people do is they get into a business and there's a lot of obstacles that are in front of them and it deters them from acting accordingly. And they get in a mindset of, oh, well, there's a roadblock. I can't get around it or over it, but you can, but you think that you can't. And then you start to come up with different reasons to make yourself feel bad about it and then make yourself feel good about being feeling bad to say, hey, well, the other guy's doing it for $100. I'll never be able to compete. So I'm just going to sell my camera and go into something else. Well, the guy that's doing it for $100, that's great. But that only works for some people. And there's a lot of people out there that pay for value. And so you need to be looking for the right customer if you're in a market that you know is, is oversaturated or you have guys out there that are doing it for $100. I'll be totally honest. And most people won't like this, but our tour started at 145 the reason being is because it's it's as simple as taking a scanning. 3D is going to replace photography, and in order for do that, in order for it to do that, it has to be affordable to implement. So we can all sit here and try to charge ten cents or eight cents or seven cents a square feet, and that's great. But then, how does it get implemented on a larger level? We make more money in volume than you do on one-offs. Now, there are certain industries that do not need to have that um, discounted market, you know, pricing. And but in the real estate industry, if you want to hustle in the real estate industry and compete, you have to compete in pricing and you have to make it affordable for realtors who don't want to spend any money to spend the money. And, and, and it's 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 not the easiest task to get these realtors to spend money. But I promise you, it's possible. You have to get them thinking in the right mindset, not so much about spending money, about building their brand about getting more visitors to their site because you have 3D and everybody else has photos. If you had 500 homes in a market at the same price point and everybody had photos and you had a 3D tour, I don't care who you are, you're going to the 3D tour first because it's a better experience. I don't, a lot of homes are sold and someone buys it and their perfect home was your home, but your home was in the line with the rest of them and they found something that met their criteria before they came to something that was the perfect home, which was your home. If you took your home and put it in 3D and video and you marketed it properly, now see what people don't understand is the MLS sucks. Facebook has more viewers than the MLS. I can reach people on Facebook in a private setting. There's so many different ways that I can utilize Facebook to market these 3D tours. I've sold multiple homes on Facebook with 3D and drone video. I've done it for home, for sale by owners and I've done it for some of the top realtors in the nation. Jim Allen Group, they do over hundreds of millions of dollars in real estate in a year and they, they average $250,000, $300,000 homes. Then I've got customers who do $200 million in a year, but they're selling $20 million homes. So it's a lot easier to accommodate that. And um, these people, whether whatever spectrum they're on, whether I'm selling million dollar homes or hundred thousand dollar homes, I've used 3D content and video content and Facebook to sell these homes. And so why not you as a Matterport service provider, you take this to the realtor and you say, hey, we can put this tour on Facebook. We can get more viewers looking at it. We can get more people interacting with it and we're going to get you a sale. It's not going to happen overnight. And if the house isn't what somebody wants, it's going to take longer. But I promise you more people will see that house before they look at everything else. And it's because it stood out. And another thing is human nature. Uh, human nature is to answer questions that we ask ourselves. Now, I can ask you a question, Dan. And you're more inclined to answer, take more time to think about and answer a question that you ask yourself more than the answer, the question that I ask you. So if we're sitting in a group of friends and someone asks about who is the 47th president, somebody might try to pull it up on Google because no one knows and someone's going to say, oh, I've got the answer. And you feel good about it. I've got the answer. You feel like you knew something more than everybody around you. And so we use human nature and we apply it to every, every type of, every way that we do business. So for instance, a 3D tour, the dollhouse view, most people don't know what that is. So when you see it, human nature is to ask yourself a question. What is that? And what do you do? You're going to answer the question by clicking on it. 
So even if you're a real estate agent and you don't have any, you don't have anything to sell, but you have 3D tours, use the 3D tours to capture the attention of the masses and then turn those, turn that attention into a lead, right? And I, I, these I, are the, go ahead. Oh, forgive me. I, I, I could imagine as uh, uh, the, we get around network forum community is, is listening and watching, they, they want to know a little bit more about you and your business and the scale and the scope, um, you know, obviously successful, but you know, I know we're talking to you in Raleigh, North Carolina, and th that that's not the only place that you, that you provide services. Could you talk about the scale and scope of your business? And then we'll kind of come back to uh, some of the ways that you succeeded in, in accomplishing this. Yeah, it's not a problem. So um, we operate from uh, South Florida up to Connecticut on the East Coast. Um, I do operate a little bit in Southern California, but it's more um, through probably when I start taking on business, it'll be through that we get around network. But right now, my main focus is um, Miami to Palm Beach. Then there's Raleigh, there's Charlotte, there's Wilmington. Then there's Virginia, D.C. So D.C., Virginia surrounding area. And then we've got Jersey, Connecticut, New York City, and then um, the Hamptons. You're busy. Talk about the, and talk about the services that you offer. So we offer the drone, the 3D. Um, we also offer uh, marketing packages. So we'll help them take their tours and put it on Facebook and help them with the Facebook marketing. A lot of the times we don't charge extra for that. We just say, give us a credit card for your ad spend. Facebook will be charging it for it. And we'll run your ads and get you some um, views. We also will take their tours and run it under our account and pay for the advertising because it benefits us and it benefits them. You know, people get to see what we're doing and then people get to see their tour and they, they feel they feel great about it because they're like, oh, this guy's, you know, this company's um, paying for my tours to get out there. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, we also have builder services and pre-development services. So we have, uh, rend we do renders. We also do 360, uh, 3D rendering, um, 360 projects. Some of the stuff we work on with, you know, LNG, um, other things we, you know, work on in-house. Um, and so really it's from conception to final sale. And we utilize 3D drone and VR technology to create these uh, custom experiences so that new builders, developers, and resales and hotels can help market their properties. Mm -hmm. and, and in terms of the, the, the categories, I'm hearing residential real estate, commercial real estate, multifamily home, uh, hotel. Uh, what, what categories am I missing that are some of your, your uh, long suits? Yeah. So we really want to focus like real estate to me covers residential, commercial, hospitality, and property management. And those are the four industries within the industry that I focus on, that we focus on. Um, hospitality and new construction is where the money's at. And that is where our main focus is because we feel that um, they have the money and they'll pay more than the realtors will. But I still focus on the realtors because in, in my it's my goal to change the way we experience real estate. But the only way to do that is to make it affordable to implement. And you have to get it to it on the larger resale level. That's where more homes are being sold, right? And, so. and I noticed when I, I look at your website, ariellook.com, two L's, ariellook.com, uh, even today you have a, uh, um, there's no mention of Matterport. As best I can tell, I see 3D showcase, but I never yeah. see Matterport. Can you you will never see Matterport. About, can you talk about that? Yeah. And like I said in the beginning, I don't build my business off of Matterport. I build our business off of our hustle and our value. And, you know, 3D, I've got other companies that are lined up that are willing to, sh they want us to take a camera and put it into the market. And I'm willing to go to the Ritz Carlton and scan a few hotels with that new camera because um, I'm not so much worried about what Matterport's doing. I'm worried about what I'm doing and what other companies are doing and making sure that what we're doing is innovative and at the, at the forefront. I will tell you Matterport's got the best product out there right now, but that can change. And I will tell you that I can take a, cra a lower end product and, and sell it to my customers and they'll be just fine with it. You know, it's all about how you package it. So most people don't think like that. They think, oh, well, they're sold on Matterport. They're going to stick with Matterport. Matterport thinks that because most people have Matterport in front of them, when other cameras come to market, they're not going to do it. They're not going to go to there because they, they love Matterport. But I promise you they will if it's if it's bundled right, if it's packaged right. Um, and so I won't ever mention Matterport because there's no sense in it. Um, you know, we're, we're, it's 3D technology. That's what Matterport is. But that's also what um, other cameras are, 3D technology. And so, so I, what I see on your website is uh, among all the services that you offer, Offer, you, you talk about 3D uh, and it's just 3D, 3D or 3D showcase, uh, no Matterport service provider uh, badge, uh, no mention of Matterport. Uh, so you're building your brand. Here are the services that you offer and within 3D uh, gives you the flexibility to decide what 
what 3D solution is the right for this particular client. And it may vary in terms of what the client's budget is or what, what you're trying to accomplish for them. Exactly. You know, I mean, Samsung Gear 360 takes beautiful photos or even a video. And really, all we're using, we're content creators. We're creating content to capture the attention of the masses. I don't need a 3D tour to capture your attention. I can do a 360 view of a $20 million uh, bathroom in a, or a, a bathroom in a $20 million home, and you're going to come look at it. You know? And well, I, I think I looked at that $20 million home and had a, <laughs> it had a bathtub in the shape of a, 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 I don't know if you would call it a stiletto heel, yes, a high heel. Yes, I remember that customer. Heel. Yeah. Uh, was that was that one of your twenty million dollar listings? So that listing is actually, I think, about eight or nine million. I believe it's still for sale. Um, Chad Carroll has it. He's a, a big realtor. He was on a uh, million dollar list in Miami. Um, and the guy who owns it, uh, he's a strip club owner. If you couldn't tell. <laughs> I, I I don't know when I got when I got to the the part that had the bathtub shaped in in a. Uh, an, an, an amazing, I don't know if it's, it's stiletto. It's a stiletto. It is. A, a stiletto yeah. that they, yeah. the, the height of the heel, even though it's a bathtub, was still extremely high. Yes, yes. very high. Yeah. So I, um, always fun shooting really upscale uh, uh, places. So it's been fun. You know, everybody has quit your day job, become a, uh, open up a strip club, and then you two can. <laughs> and you can have a stiletto bathtub. And have an $8 million <laughs> home to, to, to sell. So yep. apparently it may be still available. So. Um, uh, check with Robert in case you're you're in, you're in the market for a house that comes with uh, you know that kind of amenity. Uh, yeah. I think I think it had a a, a, a pu- I may be mixing up the the places, but a pool table. Uh, it, it looked like a palace, but it still had the the accoutrements of of maybe an unexpected uh, look as you go through the house. Like, yeah, it does. I mean, nothing's in the house, and then a pool table just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> Not nothing's in the house. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of, kind, of, kind of funny. So um, uh, I, I, how do you get these meetings? Uh, you know, you're obviously talking to very successful people and, and people that control a lot of decisions. Uh, you know, m- many of us are, you know, kind of scratching our heads, w- wondering, you know, h- how do you get in front of s- somebody that that's, uh, represents an, uh, an $8 million property? So it's all about email. So all the big accounts that I've ever closed have been strictly from email. And mm. I start at the top. I go to CEO. And I get the CEOs to answer. I've talked to CEOs of multiple billion-dollar companies, and they put me in contact with the people that I need to contact. But when it when it comes from them, it's, it's taken so much more serious, right? And so I start with the email, and I find either the CEO or the chief marketing officer or the vice president or whoever I feel is going to be the easiest to contact. I always want to go for the CEO though, because when I go to the CEO, I'm a CEO and I'm coming to you with a CEO mindset and I'm coming to you with, Hey, listen, if you knew what you were doing, then I wouldn't have to contact you. I'm contacting you because this is what you need to be doing and you're not doing it. And a lot of people are afraid to tell somebody who's been, who might run a billion dollar company that, Hey, they're not in it. And a lot of these companies, I tell them straight up, listen, you're in it now, but you won't be in it next in the next 10 years. And the reason being is because of what you're doing right now. It's you're not adapting tech technology. You're not spending the money on it because you're saying, Oh, well, homes are selling with just photos. I don't need 3d and VR. Well, that's totally wrong. And a lot of people say, well, Robert, how do we know that you're, you're unbiased or you're biased because you own the company. I say, I invested into the industry and the company because that's where everybody, that's where it was going. So I may be telling you everything that I end with is buy more 3D and video, but it's simply because I invested in the company because you should be buying 3D and video, not because I think that you should buy 3D and video. And that's, you have to be confident in that. And so when you contact these CEOs, you don't contact them with, hey, I was wondering if I could scan something for you. No, you contact with them saying, hey, I've got a succession plan for you, a domination strategy. And here it is. And I line them up. Many CEOs can go back to my emails and I have a, the, the CEO of Realtor.com, Ryan O'Hare, I emailed him at 1030 at night because I wanted to, you know, get a deal with Realtor.com to provide all of, you know, their, their agents and their clients a preferred rate on scanning through Realtor.com. It would add more value to Realtor.com. It would help Realtor.com create more content for Realtor.com for free because the agent's paying for it. But the agent could then say, hey, well, the benefit of me joining Realtor.com is I'm going to get this price on tours I can't get anywhere else. So it helps build the brand of Realtor.com. I painted that Mona Lisa and I called it Mona Lisa because it, it's a Mona Lisa. We could sell it for whatever we want. It's priceless, right? So I paint this Mona Lisa for them in an email and he wrote back right in, within 30 minutes, put me in contact with um, his chief marketing officer. And then it kind of fizzled out because those guys don't know what they're talking about. you know. And so I let Ryan know that his team didn't know what they're talking about. And if he ever wants to learn something, feel free to give me a call. And you could say that I'm being egotistic. I, mean, I have an ego, but I, I, it's not an ego. It's I know. 
just like you guys know. Otherwise, why would you have bought a camera? Why would you have invested all your time and effort to build a platform and a network? And so you have to be confident and you have to go after the right people. And you have to contact them adding value, not trying to be a salesman or not trying to sell them something because everybody's trying to sell them. You know, I'm, I'm going to sell them, but I'm not going to make them feel like it's a sale. I'm going to make them feel like it's a value add. I yeah. need this company. Robert, I have some concern about you because I'm not sure you have enough confidence uh, uh, <laughs> in your ability to rep represent yourself and your company and your uh, solutions. So, hey, if you're if you're just tuning in, I'm uh, I'm Dan Smegrod. I am the founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Uh, today is Friday, September eighth, two thousand and seventeen. Uh, you're watching WGAN TV live at five. We're uh, live at five o'clock Eastern time, Monday through Fridays. Uh, today we're visiting with Ariel Look CEO, Robert Conencamp. Uh, we're uh, visiting with him in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm in Atlanta and uh, Robert's company actually has a footprint that covers uh, uh, the, the Eastern seaboard of uh, the United States uh, with some other locations around the country and even international. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. So again, Robert, thank you for joining joining us today. Fascinating to listen to. I think any any one of the topics that you've talked about, we could probably talk about for a full hour. <laughs> I just, I mean, I'm I'm fascinated with you talking about, you know, laying out cash and go checking into the hotels. Uh, uh, but it paid uh, off. See, that's yeah. what under people understand is, is they would never do it because they're not, they need the money back tomorrow or next month or next week. Um, I did it and I didn't see anything for three years. It took me three years to build that client base. And so where that, where that goes to is like, there's a lot of low hanging fruit. And I believe a lot of the MSPs have gone after that low hanging fruit. I tend to stay away from the low hanging fruit because I don't need the money right away. Mm -hmm. And so I take these years to work on Ritz Carlton and Lennar and Toll Brothers and some of the biggest names that you that you hear about in the industry. Um, Apartments.com. Yeah, I contacted Apartments.com before they knew about Matterport. I hustled them so hard. I was writing the, the, the president at the time every day, pushing and pushing and pushing them. They had interest and then I guess they found out about Matterport, went to Matterport directly because I never said it was Matterport, of course. Um, and then now they, they're one of the Matterports. They, I think they did over 30,000 scans in one year last time I checked. And I don't, it, it wasn't recent. It was 15 or 16. Um, but the, the, it's big. And um, and Realtor.com now owns, has equity in Matterport in yes. a strategic alliance for uh, formerly called uh, syndic Matterport Syndication Beta, now known as Matterport Content Distribution. Uh, we're going to be talking about that uh, yes. ne next week on WGAN TV Live at five. I believe that program is on Tuesday. Um, but I, you know, I I I almost wonder uh, whether uh, Realtor.com deal with Matterport is is a result of you early on. No. No. Okay. No. no, no. I, I'm, I don't need to take any, I don't, I will, I will say that it has nothing to do with my hustle there. Apartments.com maybe because I was talking to them so early. I, I was talking to them when they were still mesh views. We didn't even have 360s. I was scanning Ritz Carlton's with mesh views, not 360. Not that's Panama. crazy. Wow. Yeah. That's, un, that's unbelievable. So I, you know, I, I bought the camera Matterport uh, pro 3d camera in July, 2014. I believe that was the first month that what we know today is Matterport Spaces 3D Tours was possible, but before that, there was yet an earlier generation camera, and I think that's what you're describing that was only capable of scanning essentially data. Well, the, the camera was capable. Of, the camera was taking photos, but they weren't. They didn't figure out a way to um, place them within the 3D tours, mm -hmm. right? And so that came. It, it was talked about because the the uh, the quality wasn't there with the mesh view. Um, so, but the cam but all the tours that we did that were mesh those got turned into the panos um, once the technology was available. So the cameras didn't change. Ah. And they were using, you know, Xbox Connects, the older version. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they just recently came out with the new camera, which I haven't bought any yet. I might buy one just to have it. Um, but again, it's if you think that you can't sell Matterport because you have the older camera, then you're thinking completely wrong. Um, because again, a lot of what happens is people read, read about something in a ma magazine and they think just because they read about it in a magazine that it's, it's there, it's done, it's taking over. I better invest in this or I'm going to be, you know, wiped out. In reality, only 1% of the listings have Matterport, right? So there's so much work, there's so much more work to do and there's so many more listings out there for us to capture. Um, so it's important yes, to, I, I don't know how many of us, uh, in, in the community are prepared to take, uh, uh, three years from the time we uh, begin a conversation to the time we actually get uh, cash business in. So, yeah. Um, uh, 
uh, uh, certainly in, inspiring to hear. You know, and I think that's probably actually if I, just on a tangential note here. Um, I, I would say everyone, everyone in the We Get Around Network Forum community has some other business. Uh, and Matterport is an add-on. They're a photographer, they've added Matterport. They're a videographer, they added Matterport. They're a drone photographer, they added Matterport. Uh, there, there's no one, uh, please, you know, raise your hand if you make a living solely, uh, you know, uh, 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 scanning with Matterport. I, you know, I, I don't think that that's, um, you know, anyone um, is actually making a full-time living with Matterport. So, you know, e e even, you know, from, from your perspective, um, you had other businesses and added Matterport. Um, mm -hmm. but, but I actually shouldn't say Matterport. I should, I should really say, um, 3d technology, a, a 3d because that, that's, yeah. you know, I, I, I think that's magical. And I, I know we've had many discussions in the forum. I mean, so much so that I think people are just, uh, have, have, are ready to stop talking about it, but you know Matterport put in their logo. Uh, that's a good question for you. Matterport puts its logo over everything. How do you feel about that? Does it bother you? Not bother you? You? I, I don't care because I like to hustle. So you know it doesn't make a difference to me. Um, I'll tell you this. Uh, I created a WebGL player um, two years ago, and I had to get all the data from the camera myself because Matterport wouldn't give you that data. And I bring this up, and I, and I hate to bring it up, but it's something I want to bring up because it's something that's bothered me for many years. Um, and I've told you before, I, I believe in the email, Dan, but, um, you know, Canon um, doesn't tell you that they own the pictures that you take with the Canon camera. And they don't tell you that the Canon uh, pictures that you've just taken only live on the Canon uh, server, the cloud. And so if Canon did that, though, I'm sure that there would be a lot of pissed off photographers that would sue Canon for doing business like that. If in my mind, it would be fair and deceptive trade practices. Other attorneys I've spoken to, um, all my legal team have, have said it the same. I'm not one who thinks I have to go sue everybody to get what I want. I'll just hustle my way there. Um, but the fact that Matterport does business the way that they do business to control the content has lost a lot of people money, including myself. I, many ventures I've started, I've had to shut down because it just wasn't, it's taking too much time, effort, and money and emotion to work with Matterport on it. So I created a WebGL player. We had ad spa spaces being sold in it. We had it played video. So it was a WebGL player that was a 3D showcase, but it was also a video player and it was a contact form and it was an advertising engine. And so we could have, if you walked into the kitchen, wherever you walked in, I could then um, have ads pop up for a Samsung refrigerator um, or paint on the wall from Sherman Williams or uh, GE electric, you know, wh whatever it might be. And we built this out. I actually showed it to Matterport because they wanted to see it. Um, and it got us a little farther because we were able to make a deal with them so that we could capture the data, but it would, it didn't, it was so hard to put it all together that it, even though that I could now have my data and only my data, not everybody, not other people's data, but my data, it just, it, it was great to have it, but I couldn't do anything with it because it was so cost costly to do something with it. So I had to stop building my WebGL player and stop focusing on that, which was something that I wanted to focus on because I believe that it was something that would help. It was scalable, not in, in addition to the service. Um, and, and it all comes down to Matterport and their service agreement saying that, you know, they own that photography and the data. And in reality, it's not owned until it hits the server. So I can take it before it hits the server in the cloud. And then in, and in addition, I'm not breaking any, um, you know, rules. I can also, um, take the camera and, and, you know, erase the firmware and, you know, put my own firmware on there and I can use the utility of the camera and just use my own software. There's many people out there that are maybe on this call or in this community for sure that know how to do some of that stuff. But it's sad that we have to think and, and work like hackers to access data that we paid $4,500 for a camera so that we could create and use that data. Well, it's only available on the Matterport cloud. And so I have a huge problem with that. And I'm interested to know your feedback on it because I've never asked. Oh, I, I absolutely agree with you. I, I, I believe that uh, open systems win. And uh, I think uh, Matterport is a closed system. Uh, you know, in the, in the long run, uh, they're going to miss out because there's going to be companies like yours uh, that are going to say, hey, uh, a new 3D uh, camera platform has come out. Uh, they're not making any claim to the intellectual property of the photographer. Uh, and uh, uh, you're free to do what you want with the photography and the data that the camera captures. Now that said, I'm, I'm sure Matterport will be a you know a huge success uh, and will continue uh, to to thrive. It's, it certainly is the 800-pound gorilla uh, in in the space, Robert. 
Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think it, uh, as they look at different channels and uh, market to residential real estate agents, commercial real estate agents that are our clients, uh, I, I think it's always frustrating for a Matterport Pro uh, to, to go educate a client only to have them decide, uh, you know, I'll buy a camera. So, uh, you know, we're, we're the ones that are taking the time to, to learn how, and it, I, I, I guess the point is, is, is Matterport enables the, the, the contradiction here is, is as Matterport adds more features uh, to uh, Matterport Workshop, uh, that it really takes a professional to, to, to really showcase uh, Matterport in the best light. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, we're, we're the ones who are actually going to shoot way more content than an individual real estate agent who might say, uh, my return on investment is I, I, I need to shoot 10 scans a year and I'm happy. So Matterport sold the camera. They don't make money on selling cameras. They make it on processing and hosting and ancillary services. And, 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 and so, uh, 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 we're, we're the ones who are actually, um, probably their best, uh, prospects, no, we uh, because we will, we will do the best job of showcasing what their technology is capable of. We're the ones who will, who will do the most scanning. And I think just at the time that, um, uh, 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 that, that Matterport is ready to explode in a, in a, in a good way, it, it is likely to be an, enough competitors that have compelling 3D solutions that I suspect that photographers will, will say, I, I'd rather have a Canon camera uh, that enables me to own my intellectual property and do what I want with my pictures and, and in this case with my data as well. So I, 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 you know, I'm totally in agreement with you and I, I'm fascinated you know, that you only market on your website uh, saying 3D tour uh, at some point, you have to sh show a Matterport uh, screen, so you you show three three D showcase. No mention of Matterport, no badges, no no nothing. And I, I imagine when you go out and talk to a client, if client asks and says, "I'm looking for Matterport," the answer is, "Oh yes, we do that." Um, of course. <laughs> but unless the client actually says Matterport, you're always always talking about three D tour, uh, so that when you have either a, a different technology that would be a better solution for that client. Uh, that it's easy or, or a company that's willing to work with me because of the value that Ariel look and other MSPs bring to the table. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited that today that there are 70 different companies that make uh, cameras in our space. Uh, I'd say there's probably maybe 10 that are kind of in circling uh, around um, in Matterport, uh, a number of which have not been, that have been announced, but haven't been released yet. Uh, and, uh, I, so let's I talk think... about that for one second. All right. So you just said it, there's more companies with more money than Matterport out there that can build something better than Matterport faster and can get it into the market faster. And I knew this when, before even getting into Matterport. And so to, to, to give the MSPs an idea of, you know, we keep talking about Matterport and how it makes or breaks our business in some instances. Um, I went out and my goal was to build market share. If you control the market, you control everything. I could have built the technology, but it would have taken me tens of millions of dollars and time and years and competition and other people out there that have more money and time than I do, right? But I said, I'll I'm going to go a different way. If I build the market share, if I get the Lennars and the Toll Brothers and the Ritz Carltons and, and the uh, Sotheby's and all these big you know, names in the world to do business with Aerial Look, not Matterport, Aerial Look, then I have the market share. And when other companies, and they've already come to me before, come to market with a camera, they know that, hey, well, Aerial Look has quite a big market share. Aerial Look does business with multiple billion dollar organizations that have global footprints. If we want to get a camera into the proper market, I think we should contact Aerial Look and get them in business with us. And that's what's been happening lately with camera people, they're camera manufacturers. They're calling Aerial Look. We're setting up a meeting. We're talking about our huge market share. Hey, well, the next time you scan a Ritz Carlton, can you think that we might, you know, be able to let you use our camera? Absolutely. Because again, these my customers, no matter how much Matterport might think otherwise, go where I go. They go where Aerial Look goes, not where Matterport goes. And I've worked my ass off to make it that way. And you can work your ass off to make it that way. And then your business is not based upon any other technology other than you and what you know you have access to and can provide. 
Yes, and, and while you were describing that, you passed by a, a company name quickly, but I, I think you're actually uh, making a major announcement today uh, about um, uh, a deal that you've recently have done. Yes. Um, so recently, I finally, um, after a few years of hard work, so it's, it doesn't come easy, um, I closed the deal with Lennar Homes. And so we're now a uh, MSP, um, I'm sorry, uh, we have a master service agreement with Lennar. And we take care, we can take care of their 3D, their drone, and we are going to take care of uh, their renders in all their markets. And so that's a huge opportunity for the We Get Around network because I can't serve Lennar in all their markets currently. And I don't feel the need that I have to go expand to those markets if we can work with We Get Around service providers and, you know, Matterport service providers on the We Get Around network. And so with this new um, business from Lennar, um, I think two weeks ago, I was on the phone with about 40 uh, division presidents and uh, marketing directors and managers for their you know, regions. And it was a good call. And we had some interest. Um, in 3D, I think there's more pushing that has to go on on my end on the executive team because we, we want to get them to, to, to make it the law. And um, once I do that and once I start to get a better understanding of uh, once my team starts to get a better understanding of the workload and where it's going to be coming in from, um, then I'm very happy to share um, that uh, business with all of the we get around uh, members. And Lennar is just one company. Um, that's a national company that we're working with currently and have either signed um, a, a master service agreement with or in the process of signing an uh, MSA. Yeah. So uh, for, for those uh, Matterport service providers, and I, I'm going to actually say not limited to, to even Matterport. No. Uh, if you're an aerial photographer. Yeah, please. Yeah. Or you're, uh, you, you're a videographer. Uh, you you want to be uh, you know, on the map, on the We Get Around Network, Find a Pro map, um, because that's how Robert uh, is, uh, is his team uh, is, is sourcing uh, 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 Matterport Pros, aerial photographers, videographers, photographers, uh, and uh, and and then if we don't have a photographer on the map with a public profile, uh, th then we'll be posting the help wanted notices in, in the forum to to to, to source a, a pro. So anyway, thank thank you for uh, yeah, and I'll also be looking our... for pros for luxury for Marriott Luxury. So other Ritz Carltons and Marriott Luxury brands that are in markets that we're not operating in, I'll definitely be looking for some. Yeah, MSPs. and it's, so just talk a little bit about uh, um, uh, you, you've you've decided to use independent contractors uh, rather than staff up uh, uh, with W two employees. Uh, why, why is that? So um, it's scalable. And anybody will tell you that that's simply the re only reason it's scalable um, in all of our markets. Like we own cameras right now. And so all the markets that I've listed, including London and Hong Kong, we own cameras and we have people on the ground that work with aerial look only. Um, and it works, but I also, um, I love it's uh, God blesses us so that we can bless others. You know, like we we're blessed with work. I want everybody else to be blessed with that work. Uh, like I said, there's so much of it. I'm not greedy. I'm not here. I didn't start this company to, to make a lot of money. I knew that hopefully it will, and it, it has been, um, but it's simply, um, it's expensive to change the world, right? And so um, I have several other companies that I've started over the years in an effort to gain enough money so that we can help change this world that we live in, right? And so I'm very, um, I want to share everything with everybody that wants it, right? And I'm always here um, to answer questions. I, I, I can't get to everybody, but if you have something that you want to talk about, you're trying to hustle, you want to get it done. I'm here to talk to you. It doesn't matter if it's about Matterport or not. You know, um, I want to pass along some of my experiences of, you know, moving out at 15 and um, not having anybody help me um, or any money to fund any of my adventures or ideas at the time and always having to go out and create it for myself. It's, it's taught me a lot and, and provided me some insight and experience that I'm always willing to share. Not because my, I want you to do it my way. We, there is no right way. There's only your way and your way becomes, becomes the way if you grow and learn from your experiences. But if you don't grow and learn, then the way your way will never be the way. Um, and so if, if I can help um, add to finding your way, then I'm happy to do that. Um, yeah, no, that was off subject, but yeah, no, no, I, 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 I think it's great. Um, you know, I, I don't know if the my metaphor would would pass here uh, in terms of for, for you growing up, but uh, a lot of people talk about you know don't burn bridges, mm -hmm. and uh, I, um, I'm a believer in it that burning a bridge behind you can be a very powerful thing because once that bridge is burned, you can only go forward, you can't go backwards, and I, I think what I'm sensing for you growing up. 
uh, whether you wanted it to happen or not, there were some things that happened in your life that the only direction you could go was forward. There, there was yeah. no, there was no going back. And, and, and I'll tell you from that experience, that's the, it's, it's awesome to be able to go forward. Sometimes if you can go back, it's a crutch and it can be a crutch. So got got to got got to move forward um yeah. and and uh, and uh, you know I, I applaud you listening to you talk about some of the you know business development calls uh where you, you you've called it as you see it and you you've told them uh you know it's not as clear as night is day this is where the future is going and if you're not part of the the the, the future today then you're you're going to you're going to miss the train uh and others are going to you know be winning those listings getting more listings getting bigger premium listings doing that more often than 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 you are or mm -hmm. uh people are going to be booking other hotels are going to be upgrading other uh, in other suites, uh, not your suite. So I, uh, well, they're going to, they're going to see the 3d content before they get to your photos. And if they like what they see, they're going to make a purchase. That's right. So I, I, I applaud you that you have the, the, the confidence to, to talk to senior people and, and tell people, uh, how, um, uh, how it is. And you're willing to walk away knowing that uh, walking away sometimes is, is really very compelling of why somebody's going to call you back because they, they kind of felt your energy and your passion and uh, they, they got the message. Exactly. That's, you got to yeah. be confident, but you have to be smart. You have to go in there knowing exactly where, what angle you're going to go and how you're going to approach it and how much value you're going to build and what's that dollar amount. And I'm not talking about how much you're going to charge, but you need to let them know, hey, we're going to increase your revenue by X amount. Is it percentage? Is it dollar? You know, that's for you to decide and determine. Um, but you need to come in there with a plan of action. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm very excited. Congratulations on your deal. Forgive me. I'm excited because that, that means there's just yet, yet another company uh, that's sourcing uh, uh, Matterport Pros, aerial, video, still pictures, painted rocks, whatever it is, uh, using the Find a Pro map uh, right right up here, yeah. uh, which, which is also uh, uh, makes it super easy and super fast uh, for a company. And we will like be adding it to our website. I, 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 we've been so busy, but I wanted terrific. to let you know that. That, that, that thank you. Both websites, uh, Diocon and uh, uh, Super Duper. So um, uh, you mentioned Diocon, you, uh, you also mentioned Hong Kong. Um, uh, uh, I, you know, I, so, I, I can talk to you forever on area <laughs> and, and all the things that you're doing, and it's so, so exciting. But I know we, we really did want to get, you know, touch on uh, how Matterport service providers how th let's let's actually re reframe that how 3d tour pros can uh, get more clients get bigger clients uh, and at the same time help their clients such as real estate agents and brokers for residential commercial and even in the hotel space achieve their goals helping helping an agent win win more listing presentations, win bigger premium listings, maybe get that $8 million uh, house uh, with the stiletto shoe bathtub <laughs> that we talked about earlier. So I think that's kind of a nice segue into maybe Hong Kong and Dai Wukan. So if you can tell us about Dai Wukan and then tell us what uh, the relationship of Ariel look is with Dai Wukan. Okay. So I'm going to, we, we have about Nine minutes, so I'm gonna try to make it as brief. I, I, I'm not in a rush, so if you, okay. you feel so, like you got the time, I'm I, I've got some time. I might have to in about a couple minutes. I'll have to go plug the computer in because I'm getting a five percent battery. So okay, well, um, so all right. So I went to Hong Kong because I wanted to get into business in China, and I tricked my wife. It was our anniversary, and she hadn't been to Asia. And I said, "Hey, babe, let's go to Asia for our anniversary." And so I, I got her to go. But months before that trip. I had reached out to a company called Luxify and I saw them selling luxury goods and um, yachts and houses and, and all kinds of stuff in, in Asia. But I knew that, hey, they would benefit from 3D tours for their yachts and they'd benefit for 3D tours and videos for their real estate. And so I contacted the, the founders and we started talking, had a great conversation, went on for a few months. And then I kind of got, I was like, I need to get over there. They, they, have, they have so much interest. I just need to get over there. So I went to my wife and I said, hey, we're going to go to Asia. We flew into Hong Kong. I called up um, Florian. I said, "Hey, man, I'm in town. I'd love to meet." He goes, "You're in town. We didn't, you know, let's meet." So I said, "All right." So we had lunch at the Four Seasons. We had a great meeting with him and um, his business partner Alexi. Now my business partners, 
And we forced, we formed a relationship that we would say, okay, well, Aerolook will start scanning. We'll, we'll start selling this service to our um, brokerages and, and uh, museums and all the different clients could be- that could benefit from it. And so that was great. And we started right away. Like literally um, when I was in Hong Kong, I had brought a camera and we just started scanning and we scanned about seven properties and, and spaces while I was in Hong Kong that first time. And so it was right to the point. But at the end of the trip, I said, you know, you guys have this huge, um, platform of Chinese, uh, wealthy Chinese buyers. And I've been trying to figure out a way to showcase us real estate to Chinese buyers. And I said, rather than me trying to come into China and build up a market share, you already have a market share and you have brand recognition through the Luxify brand. And so I said, I have an idea of let's call it Luxify Estates and we'll showcase us real estate to Chinese investors in virtual reality. So we said, this is a great idea. Let's do it. So we started Luxify Estates. I went back to the, the States and I hustled uh, New York and Miami and LA. And in that hustle, I was able to pick up uh, Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch. I was able to get uh, Michael Jordan's Chicago State. I was able to get Tommy Hilfiger's penthouse in New York City and um, a few other iconic properties. And so with those, I, we then had a launch with Luxify and we had gotten on CNBC, Squawk Box, uh, BBC, South China Morning Post, all the big uh, news organizations in Asia and in Europe. And so it gave us validity, both stateside and in China. And so by hustling now, I was able to go to these people that I never met in my life and get them to trust in me. Like Colony Capital owns a majority share in the, the Neverland Ranch and Colony Capital is a publicly traded company. So they can't do business with just anybody because if anything goes wrong, it could affect their stock prices. And so the fact that I was able to convince them to, to allow us to feature their home, you know, their, the, the Michael Jackson Neverland Ranch in China was amazing. And in the midst of it, China, the Chinese are so like they, they like to steal everything. And so we started to see the Neverland Ranch getting auctioned in China and I'm getting calls from Colony Capital. What, are the, what the hell are you doing? And I'm, I, I don't know what's going on because we haven't launched it yet. And it's another company in China claiming that, that they have the access to it and holding a live auction bid auction for the, the, the Neverland Ranch. Now you could win the bid, but you're not going to buy it because these, this company wasn't even um, related. But Long story short is I, I got all those big names and I took them over to China and I used that in China to gain validity and notoriety. And then I did the same with the United States and press releases that got picked up by Inman and CNBC and Luxury Daily. And with that, we then had this uh, momentum that we could run with to then build this company. And so we continued to build it. And I'll tell you the main reason why I started Luxify Estates, in addition to having another company, was because I build value for our customers. And when I can go to our customers and say, hey, I'm going to put your tour in China. All they read about is Chinese are spending billions of dollars on real estate. What do you think they're going to be? Oh, please. How do I get there? For, forgive me. I, I, you're, I, I know I don't want to have you lose your train of thought, but I, I also know your battery is low. And I, I would love for you to go figure out how okay. to pl- plug in your <laughs> laptop uh, if, if, if you, if you me, want to help. All right, yeah. so- now we're going to get a house tour. So this is yet another kind, you know, kind of way that you can experience a, a property, kind of a one-on-one. And yes. This is like a door knock. I think we're going to get to see Robert's bride here in a moment. Yeah, you'll see my wife, my baby girl. Who's yeah, been... yeah. And and, and I think that I think I heard a dog too oh, in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There's a well. Since I'm bringing you into my home, I'll share you with my. Uh... It's like there a, door knock, a, a door knock dinner. Dog, oh, there's and the dog then I could hear barking earlier. Galia, say hi, Galia. Say hi. Hello. I'm Dan. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Beautiful. Uh, this uh, is actually Ian. Ian. Um, Ian's our director of operations. Okay. Hello. Hey, Ian. Good to see you. And then this is my beautiful wife. <laughs> Hello. I hear you got Shanghai to Shanghai or Hong Kong. She, or something. she can't hear you. Hear you, oh, but yeah, okay. she, she did. <laughs> <laughs> so one second. I'll be done in a minute. Okay. We're doing a 24-hour marathon. I'm sorry. Your family's not getting back. You got too much interesting <laughs> stuff to say. I, I can't, uh, okay. can't let you go here. But you found your you found your power, yeah? Yes. Okay. I just bought this new MacBook today, so I haven't even yeah. opened it. Okay, good. And so I, I, I can sorry. barely see you, but I, I know I know we'll get this all figured out. So, hey, if you're just joining us, uh, uh, I'm Dan Smigrod. I'm the founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Uh, today is Friday, September 8th, 2017. Uh, you're watching WGAN-TV live at 5. Our guest today uh, on the program, uh, Ariel Look, CEO Robert Conenkamp, and uh, visiting with us from, uh, from uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And I, I just interrupted his uh, train of thought 
um, uh, of the momentum uh, that he was getting. Uh, so Robert, you started to talk about leveraging all the, the uh, high visibility uh, properties, such as the Neverland uh, Ranch being for sale, Michael Jackson's uh, property. And, and then I, I think you were just picking up on that energy there. Okay, so yes. So um, after getting all this you know, validity, I would call it, because I, it was proof, um, proof of concept. And um, we had all these realtors interested now, and Inman wrote about us. We had realtors calling us, hey, I want to get into China. I want to get into China. Well, the only way to get into China is to have a 3D tour, right? So we create this need to get in front of Chinese money, but the only way to get there is by buying a tour through Aerial Look, or now through Aerial Look and all the MSPs that are on the We Get Around network. And so I did it to build value. And I started a Chinese company to build value for Aerial Look. It was a funnel to Aerial Look. Now, it, it's a blessing that this company has taken off and kind of turned into its own company and, and its own success. However, I strictly started Aerial Look to add more value to, I mean, strictly started Daiwakan, Luxify States at the time, to add more value to Aerial Look. And that is what I want you guys to take note from is that I may have started another company, but it could be another service or a product. Well, be, be, before you get into the into that level, to kick us up a notch in terms of why China matters, what, what how much money is being spent uh, in the United States to buy property? Uh, you know, why was this so important to figure out uh, how to enter the Chinese market? So in 2016, the Chinese spent over 33 billion dollars on U.S. residential real estate, not including commercial. Um, and so that that number in itself is huge, right? But then you also have the uh, economic instability that's going on in China that's been going on for quite a while now because it's, it's a communist country. And um, so what happens is in China, uh, their currency falls. I mean, today, I haven't checked on it, but it falls sometimes on a daily basis. And so your money, if it stays in that currency, you're going to lose money. And the Chinese are always looking for different trustworthy. They want trust worthy investment opportunities. And so it was about not only creating a platform to showcase to them, it was a matter of creating um, an experience, a trustworthy experience that they could go, they could come to every time that they wanted to spend some money out of, out of their country into the United States. And so we knew that, hey, they're spending $33 billion. They're only going to spend more as more instability comes to their market economy, as um, they, they, they like Trump being the president. Maybe they don't like Trump as a person, but they, they like what Trump has done for uh, the economy or what they think Trump has done for the economy. So they want to invest in this economy. So there's a lot of different reasons why the Chinese now want to invest their money into to other Yeah, and, and I, I could be wrong on this number, but I, I believe in Atlanta – the number is 10%. The 10% of all properties bought in Atlanta is Chinese money. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, and, and what they uh, don't understand is that Atlanta, Miami, New York City, California, those are all great markets. Those are the markets that they know best because they have direct flights there. But those aren't the markets where they want to invest anymore because they're oversaturated. They're affected by global warming. Look at Florida right now. Okay. I've got a couple projects. I have a $35 million project. It's a condo package that I'm working on in a building that's built by Zaha Hadid, which is one of the world renowned architects who's passed away. And I'm afraid that that deal will go to, go to nothing now because what will happen with this storm? Right. And so if I was a Chinese investor, why would I want to put 35 million into an investment that if a hurricane came through and there's two, there's one or two more that one behind Irma and another one out there in the Gulf coast, and, you know, so why would I want to buy a property in those affected areas that are impacted a great deal by global warming? And I don't. And so the Chinese that used to do it for ego because they could say, I have a property in Miami. I have a property in New York. And a lot of them might only own it for one to two or three years so that they, they I'm not going to be affected by global warming. Um, and so they're now taking and their interest. And is, is the intent to, to buy it, to live there? Is it to rent out so or is it just there's, old empty? many different intents. So you have ones that want to buy it to come live here because it's a better quality of life. You have ones that buy because they want their student, their, their children to come live here and go to school. Then you have ones who buy to rent, meaning an investment property, they would just rent it out. They'll never visit it, never see it. They'll rent it, have a property manager manage it, and then sell it when it's time. Um, then you have Chinese investors who literally don't do anything with the property. It sits there empty. It doesn't need to be rented. They just wanted to take their money from Yan and put it over in USD. That's it because USD isn't falling every day. And, and, and there's other reasons um, for this 
um, for their purchases. But those are the main reasons. So, so now if we're a photographer and we're thinking, oh, Chinese buyers, that's only New York, LA, uh, Miami. Uh, Chinese want to go where the smart money goes. Like, you know, so the triangle, I'm, I'm invested a lot, a great deal in Raleigh in North Carolina, the triangle area. It's a, it's a, it's a huge growth opportunity. It's the, the values only increase. I mean, the depression wasn't even that bad here. Um, you know, there's, or it, I'm sorry, uh, recession. There's, there's so many great benefits of it with schooling and, um, you know, pharmaceuticals and manufacturing. And so with these markets, they're not saturated. They're not affected by global warming and there's still room to make money. So my goal has been to bring Chinese money into more niche markets like this. So I want anybody who's sitting in a market that could be in, in the Mississippi or, uh, I mean, Minnesota, you name it. Just because you feel like oh, I never hear my um, city name in a newspaper article, that doesn't mean that there's not value there. And if we can show them the value, they will invest because so, a lot of times they're not coming there. They're just investing there. So so uh, I'm a 3D tour photographer. I'm listening to you talk. Uh, what, I don't understand. Uh, Dai Wu Khan is a, and how does that relate to me as a photographer? Okay. So Luxify States was Luxify States. And then we knew that Dai Wu Khan, we needed to start a company. We were based in Hong Kong, but we didn't have a server in China. And so we could get blocked. Now Matterport has just got their CDN and we've been working with Matterport on that. Um, so, you know, not only can we have it on our server, we, Matterport's got a, a CDN in China. And so we've been able to, you know, get those tours to showcase in, in a better format than we were because the, the old way was more of a hack than anything. But bottom line is we needed to be um, on the other side of the firewall. And so we started a Chinese company, incorporated it in China in Shenzhen, and then, you know, got our ICP, got a WeChat account. And now we are operating as a Chinese company and we have direct access to the Chinese uninterrupted um, unless we you know, do something that the Chinese government doesn't like. Um, and what that does for us, it, it pr provides more validity and trust with the Chinese citizens. Daiwakan is Chinese for come see me. Um, so it's also the name. Luxify Estates meant nothing. Luxify is a made up name, but at the time it made sense because Luxify had a brand and I was just tapping that brand. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we turned <clears> it into Lux, into Daiwakan and we got incorporated in our ICP back in January. Um, and since then, the value that we're creating is excuse, excuse me for one moment. So I, I, I just, you know, if you're watching this on the, we get around network forum right below, we've actually put the Daiwukan, uh, dot com forward slash E N. So you can see what the English language version of it looks like. If you leave off the E N, you can see the Chinese version. So I just want to in case uh, anyone wants to, uh, yeah, look and at one thing to make clear is if anybody's trying to see <clears throat> where that server is, you're going to see a server, an Amazon server in the, in the United States, because you're in the United States viewing it. Um, only are you going to see a China server when you're in China viewing it. So I know that someone had mentioned that a while back on the form and I wanted to okay. clarify that. Okay. Um, so yeah, Daiwakan, what we've done with it now is we've created a better user experience. It's not done. Um, we've actually just taken on the team that brought um, Airbnb and we work into Asia and they're now working with us to help us solidify and expand in Asia into China itself, mainland. So we've got two parts of it. You know, we want to go into China and mainland and we want to we create this awesome user experience, an end-to-end -end solution, a hand, holding hands with these Chinese investors from, you know, from looking at it to purchasing it and then, pro and then managing it into selling it again. Then on the U.S. side, we were creating a, a way uh, for... Uh, you, you went too fast for me. Excuse me. No <clears throat> so if I'm in China and I'm interested in looking at real estate properties that are in the United States, when I go to Daiwukan, I'm able to see uh, properties. And I, as I recall, they must actually have a Matterport Spaces 3D tour. They must be in 3D or 360 or VR content. Okay. Thank so you. So it doesn't have to be Matterport. I mean, literally, you can start sending me 360 photos, and that's 360, and I'll put it up there because that's a better experience than a photo. It's all about just getting away from photography. I don't like photography. So, but now we're making the connection back to 3D tour photographers yes. in the United States to say, hey, there's this platform. There's, you know, thir I, if I heard the number right, 34 billion dollars. 33. 33 billion dollars. In, in 2016, $33 billion of in, in, uh, Chinese investment in properties in the United States. Um, you want to tap into that by providing a better experience for those potential buyers, investors 
to be able to view properties and you set the, the, the benchmark as it must have a 3D tour or a 360 photo or a 360 video or uh, something in, in whatever that cat VR in whatever that category is called. So now it's starting to kind of resonate with me is I, sh so I'm, I'm a 3D photographer in the United States. Please pick it up from there. Okay, so I'm a 3D photographer in the United States, and I go to Sotheby's International, and I say, hey, you guys sell a lot of uh, high-end real estate, and we know that the Chinese spent $33 billion. and if you buy a tour from me, I'm going to put your tour into China. Sold. That's why I built it. That's why I started DivoCon. I don't have to go into detail. If you don't get enough from what I just said, then you're not thinking right. Um, you, you went really fast for me. I, and you just said probably the, the, the single most important thing in probably six seconds. So if you could say that slowly and carefully, uh, let, let's repeat that. So basically, you, I go in to Sotheby's and I say, I can get your million dollar listing or more in front of Chinese if you buy a 3D tour from me. So maybe they didn't want a 3D tour in the first place, but they wanted to be in front of the Chinese because of the amount of money that the Chinese spend. And not only because of that, because they can go back to their client and say, hey, Chinese spent this much money and your tour, because you listed with me, is going to go into China and it has a, has a higher probability of being sold. And so that is the value add. It's going into... Go ahead. Excuse me. So I, I think this is like, it's, it's like, it's, it's so, so important uh, um, of what we're hearing is if you're think if you're going into a potential client and you're talking about dollhouse view and floor plans and, uh, and uh, how you can fly into the tour, um, you, you're lost. You, you know, you, you gotta be thinking from a real estate agent and broker's perspective. I think that's what we're hearing from Robert and the, and, and, and uh, I, I didn't hear anything about selling the house faster. That's not the priority. It's all about the agent and broker getting a listing. How do they get um, a million dollar, two million, five million dollar, ten million, even, even you know, quarter million dollar house? How do you get the listing? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and th this is like so exciting because this is, I would say, among the first examples of using another platform as a lever to be able to uh, get business from a real estate agent and broker. You're not walking in to say, you know, hey, I sell 3D tours uh, and I sell it for less than my competitor. So, you know, buy from me. Uh, you're, you're walking in and say, I can get your listing uh, in front of Chinese buyers that are spending $33 billion on properties annually uh, and probably growing. Uh, and do you want to be in front? Do you want to be, do you want your, your listings to be in front of Chinese buyers? Now, exactly. now it, the property may or may not sell through a Chinese buyer, but that's not the point. Not the, point. the point is that you're speaking to a homeowner and they get it that there may be more offers for more money sooner because what's been added to the marketing mix by this agent or broker is that they are offering to have uh, this house uh, marketed on a, on, a, on, a, on a platform in China. Now, if you're a homeowner and you're comparing two, three agents or brokers, and one of them comes to you and says, not only are we going to list your house in China, but let me show you how and why it matters that we're going to shoot this 3D tour. Uh, um, are we in sync? Is this like yeah, what you're, you're exactly right? Is yeah. it Don't worry. It's about what did I say? Value add. There's no value add in a dollhouse view. Okay. Other than the fact that it captures somebody's attention. And if someone's smart enough, they'll, they'll, they'll realize that. And that could be your sell, but most people don't look at it like that. So yeah, you don't I, want to think, Hey, I, I'm selling technology. I'm, I'm going to get you exposure. Yeah, I, I, I would use that moment to say, you know, go back and take a look at your, everyone, go back and look at your website. Does it emphasize dollhouse? Does it emphasize floor plans? Does it emphasize um, uh, the ability to fly into, a, you know, a, a tour? Does it emphasize we can help you sell, help you sell your house faster? Uh, you you got to listen to what Robert is saying here because he's talking about adding value to not only the real estate agent and broker in this example, but also to the homeowner. And when you're adding that kind of value, you've completely changed the conversation from uh, you being in an, an expense that's coming out of the agent's pocket is just yet something else they're spending money. You want to move the conversation to 
uh, uh, the marketing category of acquiring new customers, new new um, new agents and brokers, and agents and brokers that are, that have getting more listings, getting bigger premium listings, and doing that more often. So um, uh, for, forgive me. I just I'm so excited about you talking about value as 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 what you bring to the table, uh, not about dollhouse view. So could you just say that again? Because I'm so I get so excited when when somebody says that. No dollhouse views. Strictly value. How am I going to make you more money? So uh, one thing, Ariel, look, uh, I used to have a motto and it's a saying, it's, it's a, uh, a branding saying, it's buying, selling, or listing a home, ask for the Ariel look. The Ariel look is an interactive experience that's going to show you everything that you need to know. And if the realtor is not going to buy it, I'm going to go after the homeowner to get the homeowner to ask for it. Because if the homeowner asks for it, the realtor is going to do it. And Dan, you said it. It's the homeowner that you need to get, nobody else. The homeowner spends the money. They're the ones who prov provide the opportunity to share commission with the realtor. We can use Facebook and 3D tours and, and we can empower consumers to transact real estate amongst themselves. I know people will argue with me about that and tell me all the reasons why you can't do that, but I promise you I've done it and I know that it's possible and I know that this technology has made it more possible. And it's because you get more information and with more information, you make more informed decisions. And in China, when you can't see it and you have to get on a plane to go there and get visas and, and passports and everything in between, if you could just put a VR headset on, sit on your couch or your office and, and transport there, it's a better experience. And you know, that's I, why Chinese come to Dialcom. Yeah, you know, I, I think there's the, uh, probably a lot a lot of, uh, of the community that we get around Network Forum community that are watching this or think, oh, you know, VR hasn't taken off. It's, you know, it's 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 uh, it's coming, but it's not ready. So I don't want to talk about it. And you know, gee, Matterport no, might talk start. about it. Who cares if it's not there yet? It's a buzzword. People, VR, VR, well, how much does it cost? I got the Ritz-Carlton to spend a bunch of money on a VR video project. It was my first VR video project. I'll be totally honest with you. If anybody from the Ritz is watching, now you know. Um, but I, I didn't. I wasn't scared. I went in there and I gave them the best product, and and it, I, I'm happy with it. If anybody ever wants to look at it, RitzCarlton360.com. Use it. Use your phone. You can look at it this way, or turn it into vertical and put it in a headset. Um, yeah. But so I think where it's we're, at, you, you need to be focused on virtual reality. Yeah, and so I think what we're talking about is is. Your potent, uh, if if uh, wherever you are in the United States and you're talking to an agent, is they can visualize people in China using a virtual reality viewer or even on a desktop to be able to have a, this immersive experience in order to be able to make a confident decision. So if the homeowner gets it. Uh, uh, then the, the real estate agent and, and brokers certainly, uh, you know, will need to accommodate the the homeowner. But certainly, making the pitch of of uh, of, it, of how you're adding value um, by leveraging the Daiwukan platform, and uh, you know, we I, we haven't even talked about it, but it, it's, it's today it's totally free. You can, mm -hmm. you can totally free, especially totally free. if you're a Weekend Around Network member. Uh, it's totally free. It's. Uh, I've used Daiwakan to go get some of my biggest clients. Now I'm giving you the opportunity to do the same. I started Daiwakan not strictly to get, funnel more business, 3D business. And now it's going to be funneled to you guys. And so there is great value in it. And it may be hard to see it, but believe, best believe all these big accounts that we've talked about, I, mo I get their attention with Daiwakan and everything else we're doing. But that's what sets us apart from everybody in the room. Let me see yeah. That. So, so, so part of what we want to, I think, accomplish today is to really is to is uh, is uh, you're so spot on, uh, Robert, about creating value for your clients and for their clients, and use a platform in China as a way to create the value. It completely shifts the conversation in so many ways. Um, uh, in, in fact, take 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 me through the pitch. Uh, here I am. I'm uh, I am ABC real estate agent in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, you you sent me an email. Uh, what what did that email say? And then what was your follow up about uh, uh, why uh, we should be engaging Aerial Look to handle our visual storytelling? Okay, so uh, my emails always start with, um, and, and it's not about bragging; it's about stating facts. We work with some of the, we work with industry leaders, some of the largest names. Whether I'm talking to hospitality or real estate, whatever industry I'm talking to, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention who we work with in that industry because the people that we work with are are known as thought leaders, and when they do something, you better take note, 
right? And so the, I'm always going to say, hey, we work with so and so to help. Sometimes I'm going to sell to help create VR experience or virtual reality experiences or digital media content to help you enhance your marketing capabilities and increase client acquisition and reduce time on market. Um, then other times I'm going to say, hey, we I I work with you know large firms to help them adopt VR and 3D and drone technology. Then it's not so much of me trying to sell you something. It's me trying to say, hey, I work with other industry leaders and I just wanted to have a conversation. And I know that after that conversation, you're more inclined to buy from me, but I didn't go after a sale. I just went for the conversation aspect. And, and I threw some names out there to make you think that I'm special enough to get on the phone with me. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm, I mainly focus on the fact that, hey, the Chinese spent 33 billion last year. They're looking for US real estate. This is a platform that allows you to, to get in front of them and allow them to experience your property in virtual reality. We're only showcasing properties in virtual reality. So that means that the Chinese would go to us before they went to others if they knew about us because other places are just showing them photos. We're showing them virtual reality. We're letting them experience it. Why look at it when you can experience it? Why look at real estate when you can experience it? I gave Realtor.com that. I gave Airbnb that. I've given Zillow that, that, that slogan. So if you ever hear that slogan, why look at real estate when you can experience it, know that it came from Aerial Look. I'm okay with anybody taking it. But that's what it is. Why look at it when you can experience it? And that's, that's the value add right there. So I'm, I'm bringing Chinese people to our site because it's a better user experience. And then I'm bringing... U.S. property owners and brokers to the site because they want to get in front of that that demographic that's spending money. And so uh, I think uh, probably to wrap it up, so we can return you back to uh, <laughs> your your wife, your yes. child, your dog, and your colleague. Uh, I, I think the, the the two ways you know. So how does this matter to me as a a three D photographer? Uh, there are really two, I would say, two ways to get involved. First of all, Daiwu Khan is a totally free platform, provided that you have 3D, uh, VR, 360, uh, uh, something something of that level uh, uh, to be on the platform. And that means you can be out today uh, uh, talking to real estate agents and, and brokers or hotels, for that matter, or commercial real estate or yachts, uh, you know, anything that the, the Chinese market is interested in uh, as an investment. Uh, you today can leverage a platform in China as, as a way to uh, help you close business. And I, and I think that the second thing, what I'm hearing is that as Aerial Look uh, grows and gets demand uh, by um, a, a major brokerage uh, that wants to have more of its agents and brokers across the United States leverage the uh, Daiwukan platform uh, in, in order for them to win more bigger premium listings, that Aerial Look uh, will uh, be uh, at the point where it doesn't have enough resources uh, on staff uh, and, and will be outsourcing it. Yes, I over hustle my resources to your benefit. So and the and the the the, the place to uh, you know uh, when 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 um, uh, aerial look is 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 moving fast. Uh, we just want to make it super easy and super fast for them to locate 3D tour photographers, aerial photographers, videographers, still photographers, um, and, and that's about having a public profile on the We Get Around Network map. That means basic standard or premium member. Uh, and if you're not, if you're not on the map, then you you may be mi missing out on an opportunity to get in, in, engaged. Um, certainly if there's no photographer on the, on the map where, uh, Robert's looking, we'll be placing help wanted notices in the forum. Uh, but frankly, uh, you know, you start to see less and less of those notices as the map fills up and there's, there's no reason for us to actually, um, uh, place a help wanted notice because as a photographer in the market that uh, either a company like Aerial Look or, or other companies that are using the We Get Around Network find a pro map or or, or, uh, or using to, to source. Excuse me. And, and what I wanted to add to that was um, I am I, I think we spend $99 a month as a premium member. It's the best $99 a month that I spend within this industry. Um, so much value has been uh, provided for that minimal amount of money. Um, so I know that the, you, there's so much value for the free, uh, membership, but I tell you, I've gotten some great opportunities is because that $99. So, you know, if you have $99 and I'm not saying this to help Dan out, I know it does. I'm saying it because it's helped my company out, um, 
spend the ninety nine dollars. I mean, well, you're actually in a different category, and I and I would say probably the you know the forty nine dollars standard membership is is really the, the 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 most popular and the and the biggest draw. I wouldn't necessarily uh, uh, set, set, typically that that ninety nine is for for uh, third party developers, camera companies. Um, okay, so uh, I, I get that. Platforms. I see the point. I yeah. understand. So I, I, well, I, I, don't, want to say that that I don't like, to, I don't like to, to over have somebody over buy into something. It's, it's really yeah. a much better fit. You're a great man for a, saying a, that. A third party service provider, a platform, um, a camera company a cer- uh, in, in, in that level. So if you're, a so if you're one of those, then it's, it's well worth the money. Thank you. So. Um, so Robert, I thoroughly enjoyed visiting with you. I, I hope you'll let us have more conversations with you. There's so many it's topics. Uh, I've, I've been making a mental note of, of, of topic by topic that we could have, you know, spend an, an hour, uh, j- you know, just focusing on, uh, 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 you know, booking hotel rooms uh, and being innovative in, in terms of how to create a portfolio and then actually use that to to, to make sales to clients yeah. that you actually have their content. Scan for free because yeah. you can use that tour to go get more business. So, I've never done something for free and not monetized it. It may have not been through the organization that I did it for, but I was able to monetize it. And last thing, virtual reality booths could be just a desk and some tables. I'm working with some of the largest brokers. They have these spots that they pay 15 grand a month for, and we're now setting up virtual reality booths. And what that does for us, it makes them buy more tours because we tell them, hey, when someone comes to sit in your virtual reality booth, they need to have at minimum 20 tours to look at. So take that and go hustle tomorrow or Monday because I'm telling you, these it's a great idea and we're, we're seeing it work in all of our markets, virtual reality booths, talk to them about it, set up a chair and table, put a VR headset on it and get them to buy more tours to put in that headset. Okay, awesome. I need to return you to your your yes. vice president of uh, marketing. I think who's uh, a bit upset that uh, that the CEO is not a president <laughs> available. So I I'll, I'll say goodbye to you. And uh, I'll, it was I'll, such a pleasure, guys. This is my first uh, interview, and um, I really enjoyed it. And I look forward to the future ones. And I've I've already looked, and some people have been messaging me. So feel free to message me. I'm here. I don't know how much I'll be able to answer everybody, but hey, I'm here. And, and Dan can um, anything that can be asked to Dan that we can talk about next time. I'm more than happy. Uh, uh, thank you. So we've been visiting with uh, uh, Ariel Look, uh, CEO Robert uh, Conenkamp uh, uh, in Raleigh. You've been watching WGAN TV live at five. I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Robert, thanks so much and uh, good, good visiting with Enjoy you. Enjoy your weekend. Safe travels or safe uh, in the storm. Safe and to, yes, it's just for all of us on the East Coast that uh, um, uh, we're, we're thinking about everyone and thank you for actually for your thoughts. Uh, uh, we're actually in the, in the path as well, but we're going to see if we can actually broadcast uh, Monday and Tuesday when it uh, yeah. is coming through Atlanta. We'll do our best on that. I'll be watching. Okay. Thank, thank you, okay. Robert. Have a great one. Uh, so um, let's see. Uh, uh, stop live streaming. So Robert, if you just have, if you're, you, you can drop off is fine. I, I, I'm just going to talk about what's coming up next week. Okay. Uh, and uh, good to see you and uh, be, be safe you. in Raleigh. Bless thank you. Hey, thank you, safe. Robert. God bless you. Thank guys. you. Bye. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Hey, we got a great, uh, uh, you know, how great is that talking to, to Robert with Ariel look? Um, and, uh, uh, I, 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 I got to come back here. What I disconnected something. I'm so sorry. Let's see. Uh, let's go back, uh, stop live stream record on this computer. Uh, so let's just come back to this page here for a second. Uh, thanks for your patience. Uh, okay, great. So, um, how, how great was that, uh, you know, visiting with the uh, aerial look CEO, Robert Conenkamp, uh, from Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, covers the Eastern, uh, uh, seaboard, uh, uh, and has cameras elsewhere on the West coast and, uh, in Hong Kong and, uh, very exciting stuff. So if you were tuning in late, uh, we, uh, we did record the program, uh, by tomorrow, uh, we'll have it published in the We Get Around Network forum. Uh, there is a discussion for WGAN TV Live at 5, Aerial Look Plus, Diucon. We'll, we'll put it there for you. I did want to just kind of take you through. We, we got lined up next week. It's really um, just a super exciting uh, a week of uh, WGAN TV Live at 5 uh, programs. Uh, coming up on Monday, uh, September 4th. Uh, no, forgive me. Uh, I have to. Uh, on Monday, September 11th, uh, we're going to be visiting with PhotoSpark founder John Javier, 
uh, with all his different uh, photo spark uh, visual storytelling solutions, uh, image editing, image enhancement, uh, uh, um, uh, virtual twilight. Uh, that's a fascinating solution. Uh, he's going to talk about virtual staging, um, how to process to um, to uh, convert a Matterport space to an empty shell that can be virtually staged, and also about his service for. Uh, archaeologic models. So if you don't have a, you love archaeologic, but you don't want to have a subscription to it, you can get just one model. Uh, and so you don't need to necessarily commit to a subscription with archaeologic until if and when you, you get to that point. Uh, so super excited to talk to, to John. Um, we had uh, originally had uh, plans to visit this past Monday. His internet service provider uh, had connectivity issues, so we uh, did an alternate program. Uh, I, I know uh, John is actually in, uh, uh, in uh, based in Charleston, South Carolina. It's in the bullseye of Hurricane Irma. So uh, uh, I actually don't know whether we'll be able to do that program either because the hurricane is in Charleston or the hurricane is in it in Atlanta. Um, but uh, we'll we'll do our best either way. If if, uh, if both of us are available, we'll we'll do that program. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if, if John uh, is is uh, uh, traveling and will be elsewhere uh, to be able to do that show and. Uh, um, uh, we'll do our best as long as we have connectivity in, in, in Atlanta. I think we're actually expecting uh, winds between 35 and 75 miles an hour, which may knock out uh, uh, power and other resources. So um, uh, by Tuesday, um, uh, September 12th, uh, WGAN TV Live at 5, uh, we're going to be talking about Matterport content distribution uh, a, a roundtable. I, I hope this is something that you, that you actually register for, join the roundtable. Um, Matterport previously offered something called Matterport Syndication Beta. Uh, that's when you're starting to see Realtor.com uh, with Matterport spaces, and you're starting to see uh, the New York Times um, uh, um, have Matterport tours show up on the East Coast, uh, in the Northeast. Uh, coming up, obviously, is uh, Google Street View. Uh, those are examples of syndication, which now Matterport is going to rebrand as Matterport Content Distribution. And um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fascinating topic. There's a lot that's terrific and very exciting about that. And there's some things that I have some caveats to, to, to talk about. And I imagine that we have some members that have some strong opinions one way or the other on Matterport Content uh, uh, distribution. So I, I hope, you, again, that you register for that show so that you can be in our virtual studio audience. If you look at this box over here, you can see that big button. Uh, uh, once you've registered, you can click on that button and, and, and join almost any of our live programs. And we are live. Today is Friday, September 8th at 6.30. Uh, uh, Friday, September 6th, excuse me, Friday, September 8th, 2017 at 6.30 p.m., uh, Eastern time. So we, we are live and uh, uh, nearly any live program, if you want to join us, uh, uh, feel free to, to join the roundtable and be part of it. On uh, Wednesday, uh, September 13th, we're, we're going to uh, uh, skip live at 5 and actually we will start a program at 9 p.m. Eastern time when we will be live streaming a meetup uh, that's in San Francisco. So we will be streaming hollow deck light fields and volumetric VR uh, this is a meetup of the of the VRAR Association San Francisco chapter, and so uh, just uh, come back to the We Get Around Network forum. You'll be able to uh, to watch that live stream uh, starting at again 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, if you happen to be in the San Francisco area, uh, sounds like a great meet up uh, super geeky and I, I just love this topic. Um, it's actually something that all of us are actually doing without necessarily knowing that we're doing it, this volumetric VR. So you, you might be interesting to just kind of get the backstory of what is it and why does it matter. Then on Thursday, September 14th, uh, we have Blue Sketch founder Petra Soderling. Uh, she'll be talking about uh, her services, uh, Blue Sketch services of 2D floor uh, schematic floor plans, 3D uh, uh, floor plans, uh, virtual staging, uh, and uh, a smart tag service that they offer. 
Um, I, I think if uh, I know uh, we have many fans of uh, Blue Sketch and of Petra in the community. If you're using Blue Sketch, it would be great that you join the program and even talk about why you use Blue Sketch and and uh, and uh, that that would I think uh, that would be really nice. Uh, gift to, to Petra. If, you're, if, you, if, you, if you've been using Blue Sketch and you've been excited about using it, which I'm, I'm sure everyone who has used Blue Sketch talked to Petra, uh, great uh, solution. We get around Atlanta uh, uses uh, Blue Sketch for, for our 2D schematic floor plans. Uh, very exciting. On uh, Friday, September 15th, we have a Google Street View uh, roundtable and uh, uh, there's been, if you if you take a look at the forum, uh, there's a there's a there's a discussion there. Let me see if I can get to that. Um, go take a look at that. Scroll down here. Um, uh, boom! Uh, you can see it's had uh, 30 posts to it. Last one, uh, it's it's Google Street View unbranded client tours, and there's a lot of discussion by. Um, uh, members of the forum that are uh, uh, big time publishers to Google Street View, and they have a number of concerns. And so uh, Metroplex 360, uh, Aaron um, are, uh, uh, in the forum is listed as A-A-R-O-N-G-E-I-S. Uh, so that's Aaron Geis uh, from the UK, uh, very prolific in the forum, writing about uh, Google Street View. Uh, and I, I know we also have, uh, we've invited, um, uh, we've, uh, today we invited Google Street View to participate. We've invited, uh, um, uh, ha having a mental uh, block here for a moment. So let me just go back up to my notes. Um, let's see, uh, we've invited uh, uh, Aileen from uh, Go Through. It's uh, uh, if, if you're publishing 360s, um, can't do it directly with um, uh, uh, Google Street View anymore. You need to go through a company that's been approved to use the Google Street View uh, API. And so we have two companies. Uh, we've invited Aileen from uh, Go Through. We haven't heard from him yet, uh, but we did hear from LCP360 Pano Skin, and uh, they'll, they'll be joining us uh, on this roundtable. Uh, so very, very uh, excited about um, uh, about that. So uh, let me just check my notes here. I think I'm uh, leaving something out. Yeah, so I, I'm going to do my best to, to pronounce uh, LCP360, Panos, uh, their brand is Panoskin. Uh, the CEO, uh, Wotek uh, Kalembasa. So uh, uh, Wotek, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I, I know I thoroughly enjoyed visiting with you in Tokyo at the Google Street View Summit. Uh, you all had a great presentation there, very exciting. Uh, if you want to act, actually, if you all want to see that presentation, just uh, look for the tag GSV17. You can find all our uh, news coverage, commentary, and discussions. You can find uh, the, uh, the not, not only actually Panoskin, but uh, um, uh, also the presentation that uh, that, that Aileen did uh, for Go Through. Uh, and so now, uh, anyway, that, what I'm trying to say is really excited to have this round table and we're going to try and do three things. One is identify what are the pain points for the Google, uh, uh, Google photographers Two, what are the recommended solutions for Google? And three, we're going to do our best to help prioritize of all the things, uh, what, what, what's the wish list look like in terms of priorities? And so hopefully we'll have a representative of Google Street View on the program. But if not, we will certainly you know, follow up by sending a, a link. If they're not watching live, we'll send them a copy to say, hey, you know, here are some of the concerns that members of the We Get Around Network Forum community have uh, about Google Street View. And uh, we've tried to do our best to say, here's the problem. Here's what we think the solution is. And here's our recommendation in terms of what those priorities are. So. Um, uh, really excited because this, the 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 uh, platform that we use enables us to have as many as twenty uh, live video chats uh, s simultaneously, uh, you know, discussing issues. So we hope to do more and more of of that. Um, anyway, it's six thirty p.m. Uh, Friday, uh, September eighth, uh, two thousand and seventeen. Probably time for me to go home and make dinner for my wife, and then figure out some of the uh, planning that we need to do for uh, Hurricane Irma. Uh, may, if we're lucky, it may be a tropical storm by the time it gets to Atlanta. 
Um, best I can tell, we're expecting 35 to 75 mile an hour uh, winds sometime between uh, Monday, Tuesday. Um, and uh, uh, so we, we actually still, still have some things that we need to do to prepare for that. So I know you're all wishing us well, and I know we're wishing everyone that's in the path of Hurricane Irma uh, to, to be safe. And, uh, and I know that's affected certainly many members of, of, of our community. And so our, uh, we're all, I know we're all thinking about uh, all of those that are um, planning for the worst and hoping for the best. So uh, th uh, thanks for tuning in. And again, if you wanted to see a recording of this, we'll have it um, uh, in the We Get Around, published in the We Get Around Network forum uh, by tomorrow, uh, Saturday. Thanks again. Enjoy your weekend.